You can download downloads. 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 Hello, this is Barry Simpson, Inyo County Superintendent of Schools with Ion Inyo Education. Got a few things to share with you today, but one of the most important is to all of our parents and graduating seniors coming up, it's scholarship time. And so I wanna make sure that all of our students who are interested in any post-secondary opportunities, which could be technical college or college or, um, uh, going on into the trades, we want to make sure that you are taking the opportunity to apply for scholarship money. Each year, this county uh, supplies well over $300,000 of scholarship money to students in Inyo County that are graduating and going on uh, to pursue their dreams, whatever those may be. And we would love for students to really take advantage of those opportunities. So look for those applications. I'm sure that you can find them in all of your school offices. I'd also like to uh, point out that the Inyo County Office of Education uh, with a partnership with LADWP also offers a number of $2,000 scholarships each year to students going into fields that uh, of course uh, would translate into jobs with LADWP. So please look for that opportunity as well. And we would just like to say thank you to all of the great foundations and uh, contributors and scholarship providers in our county. Uh, such great work that they do on behalf of our students. So please, parents and students, be looking for those opportunities because they're coming out right now. We want you to take advantage of those. I'd also like to uh, point out there's a really exciting event that happens down in Lone Pine each year. Uh, it's the Blue and Gold Night. Um, it is the FFA fundraiser uh, that Brenda Lacey and her incredible program puts on each year. Uh, it, is, it takes place at the uh, film, the Western Film Museum in Lone Pine. And if you haven't been to, the, uh, to this event, it's one to check out. Uh, you get to roam through and visit, uh, uh, take a look at all of the uh, things in the museum, as well as supporting those students uh, the, in the FFA programs in Lone Pine. So look for that, that's in early April. I believe tickets are $35 a piece, so I'm sure that you're gonna be hearing more about that over the next couple of weeks. And finally, I wanted to share with you something that uh, we're kind of excited about at the Inyo County Office of Education, and it's a grant opportunity that we've been working on. And it's actually with the USDA, if you can believe that, not necessarily an educational organization, but it is an, uh, a grant that is uh, basically centered towards rural areas. And this is a telecommunications and a telemedicine grant which would allow us to put state-of-the-art Zoom rooms in every school district in multiple sites in that school district within the county. The exciting thing about this is the opportunity for students to take dual enrollment classes with Saracoso. So students in Death Valley, students in Lone Pine could be taking college courses through uh, a system like this. It would also allow us to provide some counseling in some of those hard to reach areas. Um, it would also uh, allow for um, a lot of professional development to occur across the county. We could have teachers in Lone Pine and Death Valley working together along with staff up here in Bishop. It will allow us to share ideas, um, improve instruction. And so we're really excited about that grant. We've been working really hard on that. Uh, it is a competitive grant, but we, we are, uh, I would say, the perfect example of what this grant is trying to accomplish and the kind, type of area that we live in fits in perfectly. So we're really excited about this opportunity, so we look forward to that. Uh, on, the, on the education, on other education fronts, it's hard to believe we're in March. We're getting close to graduation time, if you can believe that. Um, so students uh, are working hard. We're well over the 
60% mark in the school year. So things are, are, are gearing up towards that. We're excited about our adult education program graduation. We have a number of students who will be graduating this year from that program. Very pleased to share that with you too. Um, things are exciting and happening here in Inyo County. Uh, and we just uh, want to thank you for all of the support. And so once again, this is Barry Simpson with Eye on Inyo Education. Hello, this is Jimmy T with Rock the Vote with Danielle Sexton, the Inyo County Clerk Recorder Registrar of Voters. Welcome. Thank Welcome you back. so much for having me. So we're talking elections and voting, and we just had an election. Yes. And we're sort of closing the door on it. And uh, sorry, putting the book on it. Tell us about where you are and the status and what happens next. So after we certify, which we talked about in a prior meeting with you, uh, we will then, the, certifi the certified results go to the boards of supervisor. They will accept the results and any contests that are in their jurisdiction, they will then declare the winners um, of those jurisdictionals. For this election, what that means is that um, local elections of our supervisorial can contests if any candidate wins more than 50% of the total cast of votes, they can be declared by the Board of Supervisors that they have won. If you have a contest for um, local candidates and no one wins more than 50%, the two top vote getters will um, have a runoff in November. Um, so that's what uh, will be determined on March 27th when we certify and then um, validated by the Board of Supervisors. This is set for the Board of Supervisors meeting on April 2nd. Now, how would you give the voters at Inyo County a grade if you had graded this election? Our voters, yes. we, um, I'm, I'm disappointed on how low the turnout was. Um, so disappointed that I did additional research. I'm a little bit of a data head. I'm a nerd. Oh. <laughs> it helps when you deal with so much data. <laughs> um, but so our current turnout uh, for this election was only 54%. And I was, uh, again, it was disappointing. Um, so looking at stats, California wide was a low turnout and Inyo County is actually the fourth highest turnout out of all California counties. So we did good. Um, so I went back and looked at uh, prior presidential primary election uh, statistics and we are on the low side, uh, but definitely in the ballpark. Um, 50 in the 50 percentile range is just where it's always been. Um, so I'm hoping for a higher turnout. And looking at that same data analysis, uh, presidential primary elections usually have an 80% turnout. And I really um, have high hopes that Inyo County will keep up those high stats across the county counties. Absolutely. Now tell me about the presiden presidential election coming up in November. Yes. So our process for that starts in July. <laughs> so it's uh, we get a short break and then we're right back to it. Um, so again, any of the local contests, that any candidate does not receive more than 50% of the vote, the two top vote getters will go to the November election um, for a runoff. Um, what else is gonna be on the November ballot is the uh, president and vice president for each party, um, one selection for each party. Now, unlike the prior uh, presidential primary, um, all voters will be able to vote for all parties. Um, only the primary is split on um, by party preference on how you're registered. So all voters will now be able to vote for any party on there. Um, everybody gets the same ballot. Um, runoffs for all the federal and state candidates will be on the ballot and lots of local, um, lots of local, actually I had so many I wrote them down. Um, so we have some city of Bishop positions. We have board of education, school district boards, hospital boards, and the Inyo Mona uh, Resource Conservation Board. So they will all have um, items on this year's uh, November ballot. I have a full list on our website on what's on the ballot um, to to show who's all the different positions. Traditionally, someone would write in Mickey Mouse. Now, is that 
binding anymore. Write-ins. Write-ins are very interesting. I do have more information on our website on those as well. To be able to get a vote for a write-in to count, it has to be a certified write-in. You can't just write in anybody's name. It has to be a name that is certified with the Secretary of State's office. And how hard is it to get the certification? Um, I haven't, I, okay, I don't sorry. know. <laughs> That's okay. okay. That's okay. Um, I would imagine it's pretty hard. Um, they have to go through the same validation processes. They have to prove that they qualify. They have to do all the things that regular candidates did. So the, uh, the certified list is usually uh, people who missed that deadline and did additional steps to get onto the certified list. Okay. Yeah. Now for November election, when your bowls close, when do you transfer the information to the state? I mean, how do they know this is what in your cast for the president? Oh, so like, um, and so all elections. So how does our information go to the state? Every single time we run a report. So every single time we're updating those reports on our website and posting them in our hallway, we are also at that same time keying them into the state's database and then sending them a report. So they have live data updated all the time. Virtually instantaneous. Yes. So, yeah. Well, we get so many ballots, like, um, after the election, and those have to be processed as long as we receive them by election day or that they're postmarked by election day and we receive them within seven days after, those get processed. And so we receive more than half of the thousands of mailed ballots on or after election day. And so oh. that's what really delays those re results. And so if people want sooner and better results, Get those mailed ballots in early. Vote early. Vote in person. Vote often. Yeah, right. vote. <laughs> vote in person, or or if you're going to vote by mail, give them to us early. Um, otherwise, we will get them processed after the election. Is, is Usually any, about a week. Is there anything I missed that you'd like to comment upon? Um, I just hope for a good turnout for November. I, again, that 54 percent was was disappointing. We get out and vote. <laughs> And the polling places, the people are just amazing. I highly recommend going there, even if you're not voting. And we're so grateful for our poll place workers. They work very long, very tired. It's definitely a labor of love. And we are so grateful to have them. Um, they are a great group of people. This is Jimmy T with Rock the Vote with Danielle Sexton, the Inyo County Clerk Registrar of Voters. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jimmy. Hi, I'm Dustin Blakey, the Farm Advisor for Inyo and Mono Counties. And I'm Laura Mogg. I'm a, a master gardener. I'm a volunteer for Inyo and Mono Counties. And I volunteer at the community garden quite a lot. Right. Uh, so, um, but I garden. I garden like crazy, like all the time. I'm like uh, the garden nerd but um, and fanatic. So now um, all the local nurseries have brought all the plants into their, you know, nurseries. So what should I look for when I'm uh, buying plants? Well, you know, you want to get something that's going to grow in our area. And, and obviously our area is a little unique. Most oh, of California is, terribly. I would describe as mild and everything grows. But we definitely have some issues, you know, particularly our winter being so cold compared to most of California. We have to really be careful about the kinds of things we buy. Right. Uh, you know, generally our nurseries do a pretty good job of getting things that, that work for the area. But we have so many different elevations. Mm. You, you kind of have to be careful. So I think probably the best thing for people to do would be to, you know, look at the little tag that comes on the plants that's there for a reason. And usually it'll say something about its hardiness or the zone. Right. Right. So we have two different ways of having these zones, right? Mm -hmm. the, the main zone that people traditionally have used in California is the sunset garden zones. Right. And th those are fantastic. Uh, the thing that makes them a challenge is it seems that every edition sunset changes those <laughs> and they, they, the numbers aren't the same. Mm -hmm. So if you like the sunset zones, that's great. They're pretty accurate. But make sure that whatever book you have, that's the one you're using for the plants because the numbers have changed. Mm -hmm. What I prefer instead for our area is the USDA hardiness zones. I think we have a little more flexibility. I feel like the sunset zones are, they don't know the area very well. They do the best they can. But with the USDA zones, uh, you have a better sense of, of what we can plant. And those are almost always on nursery tags.
Oh, are they? Okay. Okay, good. Um, I also heard that the zones have changed lately. What's up with that? Yeah. So, you know, as climate changes, every 10, 15 years, USDA takes the newest climate data and they run it through a big fancy computer and they make a nice map. Mm -hmm. And the last time they made a map was... Uh, I think it's 2023, it's pretty new. And when that happened, right, most right. of the US, particularly like at the southern half, the you know, these plant zones all kind of shifted up. So before this new map, Bishop, for instance, mm -hmm. was zone seven. Right. And now we're in zone eight. So you're kidding. Yeah. So I mean it sounds <laughs> like that. we're a lot warmer, but but you know, that that's not necessarily something mm -hmm. that we should be uh, changing what we plant, right? So it's true Eeks. that you know, the average minimum temperature over the course of a year has gone up. Right. But that said, one of the effects of climate change is that we have more extreme weather both directions, right? I've seen that. Right. So, I mean, so maybe the minimum temperature isn't quite as bad on average, but we're going to have more of these swings. And yeah. because of that, mm. I think it's probably pretty wise that you would look at maybe subtracting a zone. So before you get excited about all the new zone eight plants that would work in Bishop, um, I think they might not be hardy in the long run because oh, of a bad storm right, or something. Right, right. So maybe oh. don't get too excited about that. <laughs> Tone it down a bit. <laughs> We're still not paradise when it comes to, you know, be able to grow things like the rest of California. Hey, it's it's tough to be a gardener in Bishop. I mean, my gosh, uh, every year, and every year is a little bit different. I mean, the different, um, yeah, swings, as you say, and different things that happen. Wow. So I have friends that live up in uh, Crowley Lake in Mammoth. So what do you do when you've got, you know, when there's snow on the ground so much of the year? Right. That, recommend? That's a different challenge. So those USDA zones, I think they work better for the mountains. Sunset just oh. generally calls everything in Mono County this zone called 1A, and it, it's pretty conservative. It works fine. You mm -hmm. could use that mm -hmm. as you know your plant selection, but you know a lot of people who live in that area have moved from other places, and they kind of desire a wider palette of plants. <laughs> and yeah. so if you use the USDA zone, that's a good place to go for hardiness. So most of Crawley and Mammoth in June. You can look at you know USDA zone five or six, mm -hmm. which is what shows up on the map. But the real challenge is they have all the snow, so you got to right. have a plant that can take the snow. Mm. You know the plant might be totally hardy, right? But right. if you have this incredible snow load, it, it's going to be a problem. So in general, you're going to want to avoid things that are. Uh, you know, evergreens that are broadleaf that, that spread out. There's a reason why when you go on a hike, you know, the conifers are, you know, shaped like tents that, that shed snow. And so you want right, that same kind right. of effect on the landscape. I tell you, that, that's a really good point. So I used to live up in Mammoth and I, um, I bought all native plants for my front yard because I thought, yeah, I'm going to have a little bit more going on there. And um, so I planted them in in the fall. Great. You know, in the spring I went looking for them. And then, like a light bulb went off. It's like, oh yeah, that's where they, um, that's where this huge pile of, <laughs> that's where the 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 um, snow plows pushed all this snow. And it's like, oh my gosh, they were just decimated. Yeah, no, none of them made it. You have to be aware of snow storage up there for sure. Snow storage is key. It's right. like, wow. <laughs> and then, but also in uh, this is a little different though. But there's like little microclimates around, even around Bishop everywhere. You know. Like um, living in town, it's different conditions from uh, out in West, um, all my friends out in West Bishop, you know, like sometimes they're colder. Are they ever warmer? Yeah, maybe sometimes. Anyways, there's different pockets of, of different stuff that goes on. That's important. Wow. So like Wilkerson is much yeah, warmer. Yeah, so there you are. Yeah, and so that's part of the reason why that USDA map is so much nicer because it does reflect that Wilkerson, in fact, is warmer. It shows up on the map. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the uh, banana belt around Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And um, good stuff growing up there. Lots of fruit trees. Uh, so where can people get more information about gardening and, you know, get their questions answered? Absolutely. The Master Gardeners are a group of volunteers that love to answer gardening questions. And the best way to reach us is, I mean, we have a website. It's hard to find. If you Google Inyo and Mono Master Gardeners, you get to the right place. We have a bunch of local information on our webpage. Mm 
-hmm. And we also have a helpline that people can send their questions into. And, you know, mm -hmm. give us a few days, volunteers, yeah. but they'll get back to you with, with pretty good answers for your gardening questions. It's really great if you're not from the area and you've just moved here and you don't know what to do with our climate. You know, oh. Definitely contact the helpline. Right, right. And also, um, as someone who's moved around a bit, I would say, you know, don't make a lot of big changes the first year. Just live in your space and kind of, you know, watch where the sun rises and sets and, and you know, look at the temperatures. And, um, you know, you don't have to rip out your whole yard and put in something new the first year. Just kind of, um, yeah, that can do that over many years. You can do a little section at a time, too. That's what I've done. And it's like, wow, it was... Um, and the uh, Master Gardener class is just excellent. I highly recommend it. When I went to the class and we talked about garden design, that was like an eye-opener. It's like, I don't have to do everything at once. I can just do this little section, then this little section, because it's really hard to, um, to pull out Bermuda grass. It's really pretty. <laughs> we could do a whole video pitiful. about Bermuda grass. Oh, <laughs> oh, I hate Bermuda grass. <laughs> it's just <laughs> terrible. Oh, oh well. Um, and uh, you can also get information at the community garden. So come to the community garden. There's always master gardeners hanging out that can answer questions. Um, you know, there's rental plots there. Right now there's a waiting list for a rental plot, um, but there's a number there that you can, actually it's the helpline. So call the helpline to get put on a waiting list for a plot there. Um, there's a lot of good gardening stuff going on. And uh, people, you know, share plants and seeds. We have a seed library, free seeds. So there's a lot going on there. And composting, really, don't get me started about composting. It's really a great topic. And, um, yeah. Um, anything else, Dustin? Well, just don't be afraid to experiment some. But, but, right. but definitely expect that something <laughs> may not work as planned. It is yeah. <laughs> it does a year to learn how the, the, the area works and how your yard's going to be. And even if you decide to go with native plants, some places in your yard are maybe not appropriate for all native plants. So give it that year to learn. And again, contact the master gardeners for 10 advice. years. No, give it 10 years. <laughs> it's not, you're not going to figure it out in a That's year. That's a little too patient. <laughs> no, but you're always doing something different every year. So, right. and that's how, well, that's how I learn from um, mistakes. <laughs> yeah. So thanks a lot. This is Dustin Blakey with the Farm Advisor. And I'm Laura Mogg, um, Master Gardener Volunteer. What a blessing to be with you. I'm Pastor Tim Holman from Mammoth Lakes Lutheran and Grace Lutheran and Bishop with a devotional for you this day. There I will meet you, Exodus 25. I'll be there for you. A promise given in many relationships, friendships, families, and couples. It offers a presence as a sign of love and caring. If someone doesn't make an effort to meet, the relationship suffers. In the narrative of God's love for us, God created people out of love and was present in a way that can be hard to imagine. When Adam and Eve turned their backs on that love, the separation between humans and God was devastating. We've seen this love unfold as God promised to repair this broken relationship. He did this through a Savior. God reminded people that a Savior would come through a chosen family for the good of all nations. But when this chosen family was walking through the wilderness, how would they know that God was still with them? God gave them a powerful promise of presence. God not only taught them how to make him a tent, a tabernacle, where they could worship him, but God also taught them how to make the mercy seat, an earthly throne, where he would sit and meet his people. God would dwell, tabernacle, with his people. If that sounds amazing, there's something more. Not only does God promise to meet with us in his house during worship, but the Holy Spirit also dwells, tabernacles in the hearts of all who believe. I'm Pastor Tim Holman with Mammoth Lakes Lutheran Church and Grace Lutheran in Bishop.
Three, two, one. <laughs> yes. Let's get to work. We're gonna need more firepower. Heads up, tall, dark, and horny at 12 o'clock. Ghostbusters, March 22nd.